Hey there, YouTube family. Stocks are falling today as earnings season has begun, but with mixed results. Bank of America truthfully didn't do that bad, but the stock is pulling back. Goldman Sachs came out with a miss because of a bad deal that they had made. And overall, analysts who tracked the S&P 500 were expecting a 5.2% decline in earnings, but optimistically, they've raised that to only a 4.8% decline moving forward. The bottom line is we know the Fed is expected to go up another 25 basis points. And today we're seeing that gold as well as Bitcoin is ticking up. So today I'm going to be talking to you guys about some popular ETFs. Specifically, I'm talking about the sector of natural gas. Natural gas has been on a long-standing decline going down for the last 12 months over 95%. And today when we're looking at the market cooling off from the highs that it's been pushing up towards, natural gas is the absolute absolute opposite of that story. It has been cooling off from falling very, very low. And so we may want to begin to put it on our watch list and watch it to determine if this is going to begin to go into a long-term trend reversal back to the upside, while many things that have been rising since October or January's lows may be cooling off and coming back to the downside. So why specifically has natural gas been falling the way that it has been? Well, we had a seasonally warm winter across the globe in Europe and here in the US. And specifically, natural gas is a byproduct of the production of oil. And so what we also had is that the storage capacity for natural gas, which normally increases every single year, for some reason, there was no increase in capacity in the last couple years, 2022 in particular. And so as the the ramp up or production of oil went into high effect. The byproduct of natural gas was just accumulating. There was nowhere to store it to control supply and demand, which just meant that these companies were trying to unload it on the marketplace at any price, causing the price to fall to ridiculously lows. But the analysts are looking forward and they're looking into 2024. Natural gas isn't going away and that story is going to reverse. Oil production is going to slow down and that's going to cause the price of oil to begin to go back up. And we know that there are things that can affect the price of natural gas in the world. We heard recently that Germany has three nuclear power plants that they intend or have been saying that they're going to shut down. Pulling the country off of that form of energy supply is going to cause them to be even more dependent and have a higher need for natural gas, as well as the fact that geopolitical events, the war between Russia and Ukraine, and that war expanding could further aggravate the price of natural gas and we could be coming off of our lows and going back towards the highs could be a perfect place to begin to invest. I'm going to identify three natural gas investment products for you. One of them is BOIL, the ETF, B-O-I-L, and that's a leveraged ETF. One of them is UNG, that is an ETF that tracks the price of natural gas but is not leveraged. And then COLD, K-O-L-D. This is one that is an inverse to natural gas. So if you believe that there's still room to the downside, you would get into COLD, K-O-L-D. I've been watching it for the last couple of months, keeping an eye on this story because I know that these commodities like oil and gas, they're never gonna go away. They often hit their lows and then they turn around and they spend years going up higher from there. This same exact thing happened with oil. We saw it come down to a negative value per barrel. They basically were willing to pay people to haul it away because they had nowhere to store it. And at that point, the price of oil and all the oil stock companies had plummeted to their absolute multi-year lows and it was Perfect time to buy, but there was FUD, there was fear in the street. People were saying that we don't even need oil anymore, but I'll be honest, I knew better and I invested in oil then. And it's along those lines that I've been watching natural gas. We're at that point where natural gas almost seems worthless. Right here, right now, for example, in the US, natural gas in storage is 21% higher than the average. And even a more interesting metric is how it compares to really five years ago. Currently, right now, there is 443 billion cubic feet of natural gas in storage compared to over uh, the last five years, the average was around 298 billion uh, cubic feet. So basically, we got a ton of natural gas and we've got nobody who needs it and nobody who's buying it, but this may signal the potential for the bottom. 
because it takes very little for things to turn around. Now, I'm gonna go over the charts. I'm gonna tell you guys where I got in and what I'm thinking of doing and how I'm thinking of trading it, but this is a little bit early. I really foresee that the potential bottom for natural gas might be as late as June looking forward because I believe that we're gonna see natural gas begin to move up at the beginning of the first quarter of 2024. And because the markets are always forward looking, we may see that the bottom is here in June as it's looking forward to the price increasing in the first quarter of 2024. Now, so let's just go over some of the negatives because a ton of retail has already been been piling into the ETF called BOIL, B-O-I-L, and many of them have gotten in way too early and have seen it come down much lower. So it's very important that you guys understand support and resistance. BOIL, as of just this last couple of weeks, was trading 97.8% below its 52-week high of $140. This is why it's been given an F grade for buy and hold. It has an F grade for trade because basically this thing has for a very long time only been going down in value. One of the other key indicators that stood out to me is that when you look at the open interest of calls and puts on BOIL, you see that we had a massive peak recently when it was above $3.50. We had a massive peak in puts that were purchased. We saw it drive and flush down beneath $3. And then we've seen the puts really, really cool off. So that might be the smart money giving us an early signal that they themselves think that it, that's about as low as it should go for them to continue to bet. And it's now time to give it a little bit of a pause, a little bit of a breathing room and consider going long. Uh, there's a gentleman that I follow who trades uh, natural gas on Twitter. And I like this particular quote that he gave. He said, natty gas is the most volatile irreconcilable commodity that exists, trading it with undirectional short-term options in a leveraged ETF obviously adds a huge chunk of additional risk. And so what he's saying is, if you go ahead and buy calls and puts on Boyle, which is a 2X leverage, you are basically just taking a very, very difficult, unpredictable asset and making it 10 times more complicated to trade. But this is what he does. And this is what I'm basically gonna lay out the case for you guys today from a technical point of view. Before I get into the charts, if you need better trade tools, there is a link in the top pinned comment for the Moomoo Moo investment app where they're giving away up to 15 free stock to open and fund an account, as well as the fact that they're offering a up to $1,500 cash coupon if you open and you fund your account cash coupon will appear in your account and you can immediately begin to trade and invest with it and they're adding to that a one month subscription to benzinga pro which will help you get your options game going i also host a group on mumu the mumu investment app called the stock josh fam it's a chat group you can come open your account, get your free stock, start investing today, and then come find the chat group where we talk stocks and trading, uh, stock and crypto trading every day. Okay, BOIL, B-O-I-L is a ProShares Ultra Bloomberg natural gas ETF that trades against natural the price of natural gas with a 2X leverage. So if natural gas goes up 1%, BOIL will go up 2%. If natural gas goes down 1%, Boil will go down 2%. That's how that works. And as I said to you guys before, it has actually been in decline ever since 2018. So the chart looks terrible. It's been going down, down, down. And that brings us to the inverse ETF of natural gas, which is cold, K-O-L-D. This is a leveraged inverse against the price of natural gas, which means that if natural gas goes down, the cold ETF goes up in value. It's kind of like the SQQQ ETF goes against the NASDAQ. So if natural gas price goes down, cold goes up in value. And I think it's extremely important that if you're gonna take a position in BOIL, B-O-I-L or U-N-G, which is a non-leveraged ETF that trades against natural gas, that you keep both charts up on your system. You wanna keep up cold and you wanna keep up BOIL or U-N-G so that you can see which one is showing dominance and that'll indicate to you what position you should be in. So to be very clear, as I've said, BOIL holds several negative signals within a very wide falling trend line. But what I do like in the charts is that recently we got a MACD crossover buy signal. Boyle, like I said, has been a prolonged oversold period on the daily RSI and has even gotten close to being oversold on the weekly chart. 
That's one that really stands out to me. And that's why I thought that perhaps we might be getting to a place of it being truly oversold. It had dragged along the bottom of being oversold on the daily chart. And now we've entered into the weekly oversold. And this might be the area where it's time to load up. There was also a moving average pivot buy signal when it fell below $3. And that's actually when I got in. That was actually a, uh, about a week ago. It was the previous Friday, I believe. I shouted it out on my Sunday video. On Monday, it popped 50 cents but I saw that there was the potential of a double bottom right beneath $3. We hit $2.96, $2.96, and then $2.99. And with all the other technicals, I decided to take a position. It popped up on Monday. It's popped up a little bit since. It's pulled back, but it's still moving to the upside, which means that the local trend has moved bullish ever since I chose to get into it. Now, the last time that it gave these technical signals, it actually went up 100%. So if we were to do the same thing again, that would make a potential target of $6.24 for BOIL. Now, I want to be clear. This is one of these ETFs, which is absolutely not a buy and hold. It's not an investment. You say, Josh, why isn't it a buy and hold? Can you, how long can you hold it? Now you can hold this for some months. If you're in the profit and it's moving in the direction that you're expecting it to go, you can hold this. But if it's moving down and you are uh, stuck in it up at a higher price, this thing, the daily calculation is actually greater than a negative 2%. Even though it's a 2x leveraged uh, position, when they go to recalculate this and realign this with the price of natural gas, taking out volatility, it often gets recalculated to the downside, which means that you can lose more than a 2% decline, which means that it's way more risky to hold long term. It's not a buy and hold. Now, the absolute key support that I see for Boyle right now is at $3.24. So if it were to pull back, I would expect that there would be more buyers at support at $3.24. I'm in it now, so I'm not looking to buy at $3.24. That might be a decision for people who are not in it. Personally, I'm expecting it to move up to around $4.50. That seems to be the direction that it's going. And that's where I would begin to look at potentially taking some profits because that is resistance. Now, if this were to come back to the area where it found support at $2.99 around the area that I got in, if it broke that level, believe it or not, this would go all the way down to $1.18. Some of you need to accept those technicals. Support is at $2.99. If it broke and closed beneath support on the daily chart, this thing would go all the way down to $1.18. And as I said, I'm really looking at buying more and taking a larger position closer to June. I'm bringing this trade to you guys early, but nobody knows whether or not it hit the bottom early or whether the bottom would be closer to the June timeframe, which I'm expecting. Right now, I'm expecting to see some volatility. I happen to get in it on the upswing. So I will ride that out, take profits at 450, and then I'll watch and see how it behaves if it begins to pull back from there. And we'll talk about it again at that time. Now, the UNG chart, which is the United States Natural Gas Fund. It's an index fund. This one's the no leverage. It's a little bit safer than Boyle. This also follows the price of natural gas. It also gets recalculated daily. So it's not a buy and hold. It's, it's the same as Boyle. Neither are buy and hold because they both have higher risk. This is also showing an oversold on the RSI, which is showing me some bullish divergence. Now I'm looking at the weekly chart here, and I think that this one could move back up to $8.21. Now, but if it were to break beneath $6.36, you need to be aware that this one would fall back to $4.61. So if you took a position and it got and it broke on the daily beneath $6.36, that would be a great place to put a stop loss because you might be able to add back your position around $4.61. And let me just go back to what I was telling you about the cold chart, K-O-L-D. Now this one is inverse to natural gas, which means that if natural gas goes down in price, cold is going up. Now the cold chart looks extremely bullish. And honestly, if I had to compare the two and say which one looked better, Cold looks much better. It's at the top of its trend, and it really looks like if it were to break out, it could go all the way to $100. And so you want to basically, if you're going to trade these, you really want to study the cold chart 
as much as you study the bo the boil or the ung chart when the cold chart gets to resistance that's when you want to consider adding to your boil and when cold pulls back and hits support that's when you want to consider selling your boil i entered into a small position so i could track this i'm in it now i'm looking to take potential profits at four dollars and fifty cents a better area of profit would be six but i'm not sure whether we're at the bottom or if we're bouncing along the bottom a little bit longer until we get further into the summer but this is one that when the rest of the market begins to fall hard it's when the big tech companies hit their peaks i told you guys that apple would hit 168 dollars and we got very very close to it today i think it was above 167 but when the big techs begin to putter out that's when you might want to draw over and look at the boil chart and see how it's performing this is a different stock because it's down on its lows like i said below 95 percent this is one that might do better as we move into june when the rest of the market may be in decline we'll see i just want to thank you guys again for hitting the like go ahead and say hi in the comments let me know if this was something you guys are interested in if you're invested in these or if you're thinking of investing in these i'll try to answer some questions in the comment section thanks for hitting the like if you like this content and you're looking for insights into stocks and cryptos on a daily basis then hit the subscribe and the youtube all notification bell as always my friends peace and blessings see you in the next video